Today we're going to be making an HF uh, quarter wave monopole above ground antenna for the 20 meter band. You may recall that last year, I think towards the end of the last year, we made uh, a couple of quarter wave antennas for 70 centimeters and, and uh, 2 meters and the theory still applies. So if you're interested, click the link up there. I'm not going to go through everything again. Uh, we're just going to use a simple formula to calculate the dimensions on this antenna. So I've already gone ahead and dug a hole in the backyard and um, I've already, I'm about halfway through the build on this thing, but this is essentially the supersized version of a quarter wave monopole. So we will go through the calculations and then we will finish putting this thing together and test it out using Whisper. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so this is MMANAGAL Basic. It's basically an antenna modeling program. We're gonna go through modeling this antenna so let's start with uh, the geometry. I'm going to go into wire edit mode and we will look at it in the XZ plane. And we will we'll start by defining the length of the radiating element. I'm going to come in here and make it, uh, let's see, for 20 meters, uh, where I want to be is about 17 feet or 5.03 meters in length. And then we're going to look down on top of the antenna and create our two radials, one here and one here. And uh, let's define that length also as 5.03 meters. And do the same thing to this side. Okay, 5.03. Look at it in 3D. There's our radiating element and our two radials. So let's go over here. You can see the actual values in the table. And we're going to create a feed point at the bottom wire one, the first wire we created, bottom. All right. We have to define some feed point. Now we're going to go to view. There's our 3D model of the antenna. Uh, we can go to calculate now. Our, put in our frequency 14.15. Um, you can set up your ground as free space, uh, perfect, like over seawater and real. So my ground set up here in Florida has terrible conductivity because of the sand in the soil, which is two millisiemens per meter. Okay. And this is primarily why I'm creating an above ground um, quarter wave setup. So I'm two feet above ground, which is uh, 0.6 meters. Let me turn this music off. It's getting a little crazy. Um, the material is going to be copper wire that we're going to feed through our fiberglass pole and we can start our calculation. So you can see we have an SWR with a 50 ohm impedance uh, feeding this antenna as the equivalent to 3.4 uh, to 1, which is terrible. Well, not terrible, but it's not great. And uh, we have a feed point impedance of 31.96 ohms and a complex impedance of negative 49. So that means it's capacitive, telling us it's a little too short. But let's go ahead and take a look at the far field plot. So this shows us if we're looking directly down on the antenna where the energy is going, it's omnidirectional because it's an omnidirectional antenna. And if we look at it from the side, um, like any monopole, there's no radiation uh, along the z-axis, straight up and down, but propagates outward from the antenna broadband to our radiating element. Uh, just so you can see what the far field plot looks like. So one of the advantages of a monopole is you get this outward um, low angle radiation, which is what I want because I want to do some DXing, some long distance haul to Europe, uh, which I cannot do with my current inverted uh, dipole in my attic. This is too short, so let's go to calculate and then we'll go to plots. We can actually plot um, where the resonant point is. So let's go to SWR, resonance. Yes. So we can see that uh, we're resonant at 14.829. So our antenna is too short. We need to uh, lengthen it to decrease the frequency. It's an inverse relationship. So let's close that out. And I know that if I change these element lengths to like 5.25 to 5.3 meters, which is about 17 feet, uh, we should get a better result. 5.3, negative 5.3, okay. And we will recalculate. And now I have an SWR of 1.38 to 1. Now people get really hung up on SWR, but all this means is that some of the energy is getting reflected back if it's not perfectly one-to-one. -one. 
it's not a huge deal, 1.38. That means that 98% of my power is getting radiated and only 2% is coming back, which is not a huge deal. Okay, so our, that's primarily because our feed point impedance is 37 ohms. It's not 50, okay? So there's nothing we can really do about that. I think this is as close as we're going to get. So again, let's take a look at the plot and we'll do resonance. Yes, we'll check out the SWR. And we're actually resonant uh, at 14.069, so it's a tiny bit too long. But real world, I'm going to cut everything for 17 feet, and we'll shove the wire up into the uh, fiberglass mast and set out our two radials and uh, see what kind of performance we'll get on the antenna analyzer. Being an above ground antenna, uh, we need to take two radials and we need to tune them to the proper length because that is part of the antenna system. Uh, ground mounted radials, you don't need to do this. But uh, So I isolated the uh, ends of the radials here by just tying them around a couple of pencils and then the opposite end I uh, connect paracord and tied them off to some trees. And uh, you can see the first measurement here, we were a little bit too long. And the next measurement, we were too short. So I ended up just stretching them out a little further and uh, ended up getting resonance in mid-band. So after reattaching the radials to the ground plate, uh, I install the wire uh, into the center of the, the pole there. And now you can see an animal kind of chewed at the wire or tripped on it or something. Um, initially, uh, like the radials, it was too long. That was deliberate. We cut it too long and always cut short. Okay. And uh, on the second pass, I cut a little too much off again and ended up having to add a couple inches back to the radiating element. Uh, once that was done, we were back in mid-band there. And there was an animal running around, so I uh, wasn't really sure what was going on. It's probably a deer. Uh, but uh, it looks pretty good. Uh, we got a 1.03 SWR at the top edge of the band. But like I said, longer uh, piece of um, wire on the element, and we were back in tune. So here's just a quick look at the SWR back at the bench. I think it was 1.14 at the lower edge of the band. Yeah, 1.14 and below 1.5 for the majority of the band. So... Not too bad, I can, I can tune that out if I need to. So here I've got a coax relay connected and I switch between the attic dipole and the monopole just to compare background noise. And just getting an antenna out of the house reduces noise significantly. I'm typically around S5, S7, I'm not sure why it's down to S3 for the attic dipole today. But the monopole is holding pretty close to S1 with excursions to 3. So the next thing that I wanted to do was run a whisper test. Uh, whisper stands for Weak Signal Propagation Reporter, and what it is, it's a, a part of the WSJTX software suite. And uh, you periodically send transmissions that other stations around the world can uh, receive and transmit 
uh, the data up to a database. Uh, it contains your call sign, your grid locator, your power level, and uh, some other information. And uh, you can see how well your antenna is performing and who you're reaching. So these are the results of the uh, whisper test for the attic dipole. If you go to whispernet.org, uh, you can actually map your results that people have uploaded to the internet and uh, filter it by your call sign. So you can see all of the contacts here. And I kind of have this 800 to 1,000 mile uh, single hop zone that I can talk to people on. Outside of that, these other stations you see in California and Canada, as well as Europe, um, they're buried in the noise. I can't even hear them. Now, if we compare that to the results of the monopole, and I won't call this a really fair test because these were done at different times uh, in the afternoon, um, basically midday, uh, but it wasn't an A-B comparison uh, real time, uh, as conditions can change minute to minute. But uh, we do have a substantial number of stations uh, with the monopole over the attic dipole. And um, with the lower noise floor, I'm sure that I would probably have a better time hearing a lot of these stations. And the blue line you see to the very bottom left there, that's all the way to Australia, which I definitely wasn't hitting before. And I have a lot more uh, stations in Europe, as you can see, as well as uh, at the top left there, uh, station received me in Alaska. So I think this antenna is going to be a, a very good improvement over the attic dipole. Alright, first off I apologize for the noise. I'm running a long-term robot test and I can't turn it off, so sorry about the high-pitched stuff. Okay, so we set out to make a quarter-wave monopole for the 20 meter band, which is an HF band, and um, I really wanted to make an experimental platform so that I could test above ground radials as well as ground mounted radials. So now I have the option to adjust that thing wherever I want. Um, just a quick word uh, about above ground versus ground mounted. So I have an antenna here. Two parallel lines equal the transmission line, right? This is now a dipole. And this is an inverted V dipole. Now if we turn it on its side, it becomes a vertical antenna with a single radiating element, all right? So above ground, this is a tuned system. The length of these determine the resonant frequency. That's critical. All right, now if we put that on the ground, okay, these ground radios couple to the earth, all right? If they're on the grass or just slightly below, you don't want to put them too deep. And that ground coupling occurs mostly at one-tenth of a wavelength from the base of the antenna. So when you have a ground-mounted antenna, your radial needs to be at a minimum, okay, one-tenth of the wavelength of the lowest frequency you're going to use, the longest wavelength, okay? If you have a multiband antenna, then, you know, just make them the length that you need for the lowest frequency you're going to use, right? And on a ground-mounted system, what's critical is the energy that's coupling to the ground. So more radials is better, as they always say. But you'll see this, this performance curve, all right? The efficiency of the antenna increases the, the more radials you have, but at a certain point, you're just throwing money literally into the ground by buying more and more copper. So what's best, 16, 32, 64, 128 radials? It's, it's debatable. But I would go with, I would probably start with 16, go up to 32. Once you get beyond that, you start kind of just throwing money away, honestly, to get a half a dB's worth of gain. When you move that above, I think it's like half a wavelength above the ground, the earth doesn't really couple or doesn't um, affect your radiation pattern, doesn't really affect the antenna performance. I'm only two feet above the ground, so there is still some interaction. Um, but I'm not really too concerned about it. I just kind of want to play around and understand, um, you know, how far it can reach around the globe. So the other thing is I'm putting them pretty close to some trees. And uh, there's an interesting article in uh, the August 2020 uh, QST that kind of goes over um, antenna modeling with um, a forest around you. Now, I've only got about 30 feet of forest behind my antenna, so it might not come into play that much, but... Uh, just to summarize the article, you can kind of uh, simulate the area around your antenna in a forest as a kind of um, uh, dielectric material, dielectric puck in the simulation program. And what they found was at an elevation angle of like 10 degrees, there's a 7 dB attenuation and it drops off as the elevation angle increases. Am I going to see a lot of that? I don't know. Um, like I said, i got to play around with this thing a little bit more. But what I was most impressed about was just getting the antenna out of the attic, okay, and putting it out in the backyard. It made a huge difference with noise. Um, I've been an uh, amateur radio operator since 97. I recently upgraded in 2019 to a general class 
which is why I bought the TS440. That's a whole other story. And um, I couldn't understand in the beginning how people could sit there and listen to all this noise all day long. When it turns out that my antenna is just in a noisy environment with everything going on in the house. So moving it outside was a huge, huge improvement. And um, now I've got about 120 feet of coax to run through the attic, down through the wall and dig a trench in the backyard and then I can have a permanent connection to the antenna. So um, I'm going to keep playing around with this thing and, and uh, learn a little bit more about who I can reach and uh, who I can talk to. And if you're an amateur radio operator, I hope you get something out of this video. And uh, if you're not, check out amateur radio. It's fun. It's a, a fun hobby. And uh, it's kind of like a giant playground for me to mess around with uh, electromagnetics. So, all right. I hope you guys got a kick out of this and I'll see you later. Have a good one.